Well, I got here a little late. Looks like we might have some rain soon. I better get the camp set up and start a fire. Well, just about set up. Got some firewood ready. Got the old hammock ready. Uh, let's get to starting this fire. It's gonna well, rain. It's been raining for the last couple days, so everything's pretty much wet. But usually a couple of strikes and it'll light right up. There you go. That's how you start a wet wood fire. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to split that log right there with this little neck knife. Uh, most people wouldn't understand how to do that. It's a special technique. Uh, I'll just take it and place it up where it's a little more manageable. Let me get over here. Uh, this is going to be a little hard to do. Maybe I'll get the tripod over in here. I want you to be able to see this. This is a skill that you really need to know in a survival situation. Okay. And you take the neck knife like this and you pull it out like that. And see this end right here? You get it right over here and you use it to push this button down and that'll split the log for you. There you go. See that? Who would have thought a little knife like this would be able to split a big log like that? Now these wilderness skills are indispensable. And while we're on fire making skills, you can see the wood's been wet. A uh, little trick I picked up in New Jersey when I was a kid. What you do is you take an ordinary plastic cup like this and you skim the top of the water. Almost anywhere in New Jersey on the water. Uh, I used to do it in Seaborn, New Jersey, right across from Staten Island. And when you get all that shiny stuff off the water, you just hold it for when you go camp and bring in a little container. And if the wood is wet and you need to spark up the fire, just take the water from the New Jersey River and uh, throw it right on there. And uh, works great. Well, it's starting to get a little late. Uh, I want to show you something really cool my buddy gave me. It's uh, a redneck wine glass mason jar with a nice stem on it. Uh, excuse me, I just got a burst of smoke. Uh, make some coffee now. Nothing like when you're out in the woods camping. Getting ready to hop in the old hammock soon. It's getting dark out. Nothing like some fresh made coffee around the fireplace. And let's see, I think it's just about ready to start there. Yeah. Okay, out uh, of reservoir. This is so inconvenient. You got to wait for the reservoir to fill. There it goes. It's starting to pop out some nice, fresh, hot camp coffee. You know, in a survival situation, it's real important to stay alert. And uh, you should always make sure you have some extra Keurig pods. Uh, different flavors, of course. You don't want to get bored. Some espresso. Uh, Maybe some apple cider, uh, in case there's kids in your group or something like that. So, real, real important when you're roughing it to have this stuff. Let's just put that right in there. Oh man, look, that's steaming hot too. All right. Okay. Okay, it's starting to rain now. So, I get a little bored when this happens. Starts raining so early. So, what I think I'll do is I'm gonna take this piece of wood right here and I'm gonna make a uh, spoon out of it maybe even a ladle if it's big enough I have my trusty little neck knife uh, what you do is you figure out the shape you're gonna do in your mind uh, if your mind is any good and then uh, around the bottom and you calculate how deep you have to go if you're good at calculating okay and then you just start hollowing out the center 
where you're going to put the ladle. I don't know if you can see this. I'm no good at taking videos. Um, I'm not going to bore you with the whole process. Uh, give me about 10 minutes. Okay, boy, that took a lot of work. Okay, boy, that took a lot of, a lot of work. It took me, uh, I thought it was only going to be 15 minutes. It was actually uh, 16 and a half minutes. A little burr right there. Um, but, you know, it's a good little ladle about the size of your fist. Um, usually you can't start right off the bat with uh, something that quickly, but... Uh, you know, after you do it once or twice, you should be able to whip one of these out in 15 minutes with your neck knife. No big deal. You know, people are always talking about their idols and who got them into camping and wilderness and all this. And one of my favorite people to read used to be Yule Gibbons. Boy, that guy could live in the forest with nothing and find food. It's getting kind of late and it's already starting to rain, so I better start foraging. I didn't bring any food with me. I figured I'd find it, you know. Nature will provide. So you just have to know what to look for. Okay, this is a sure sign of something. Let's see. Uh, no, that's no good to eat. Uh, what else? You forage around. Sooner or later you're going to... Now there's something. There. The South Florida sausage tree. Uh... This is this is good eating. If you could find one of these sausage trees, this stuff, that's good. That's a good thing to find. Now if we could just find like a uh, cheese nip bush or something. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Here, here. Here. All right. The cheddar cheese cracker bush. Yeah, this will work. See, I told you. If you look around, you're going to find what you need to survive. You don't need any of that fancy stuff. Well, the rain finally stopped. Uh, it's getting dark. I almost put out my fire. Still going good. One of the problems after a Florida rainstorm is uh, it gets real humid. And uh, so I finally sprung for a piece of backpacking equipment. It's turned out to be indispensable right here. Uh, it's a special uh, 12,000 BTU uh, AC unit. You have to make sure that you put the vent away from you so you don't get hot let's set that for something reasonable because we are in the wilderness it's not a 62 ought to do it and then uh, you have these marking tapes in case anybody's in your party is lost they can find you and uh, for some reason I, I also found out that uh, seeing these little tapes on your 12,000 BTU air conditioner while you're in your hammock next camping next to other people seems to piss them off for some reason I don't understand it but uh, good piece of gear uh, you know just uh, not as valuable as my neck knife but you know it's an ultra light weighs about probably about 35 40 pounds um, you know but in a survival situation I'm not going to carry it anyway you know I mean I have ammo and I have food so <laughs> you know if somebody wants ammo or food they could carry this all over the country for me for all I care but anyway, um, good piece of gear to have really reduces that humidity. Well, the only other piece of advice I really think I could give anybody about a survival situation is I learned from those survival shows I watch on TV. It's always good to have your film crew follow you probably no more than 50 yards with a Humvee, uh, maybe a pickup truck and a couple other support vehicles um, you know uh, just in case because uh, you know you can't survive alone and maybe a couple people you know like for the valet and the guy that's bringing the espresso machine over right now so um, that's about all I could tell you um, it's it's not easy to survive out here in the wilderness I've been out here a long time roughing it like this probably over like 30 40 minutes now um, so just keep on watching YouTube and you'll get lots of valuable information have a good one